We all know that the brain cortex is the ultimate control and information processing center in the brain. The cerebral cortex is responsible for many higher order brain functions such as sensation, perception, memory, association, thought, and voluntary physical action. In the human brain, the cortex is the outer layer of the brain and is between 2 to 4 millimeters thick. It is interesting to know that one study has found some positive association between the cortical thickness and intelligence. But can you imagine having two brain cortices? If not, you are wrong. You see, brain and spinal cord development begins with neurulation, which is the process of neural tube formation that occurs in the third and fourth weeks of gestation. Following this stage, the neurons start to form from the ventricular and subventricular zones and then begin to migrate to their final sites within the cerebral cortex. This stage occurs during the third through fifth months of gestation. Any anomalies during this process results in a variety of cortical malformations which are called neuronal migration disorders. More than 25 neuronal migration disorders have been described in humans. Remember that normally the neurons should migrate from the ventricular zones to the cerebral cortex. But imagine a situation where some of these neurons don't go all the way and just stop their migration before reaching the final destination. In this situation, you will have a set of neurons that have reached the outer layer and properly formed the cortex, but at the same time, there are another set of neurons that don't reach that outer layer and form another cortex below the outer one. This exactly is double cortex syndrome. It is very rare but does happen and has been reported. It is mostly seen in girls and is a result of DCX mutation. It is also called subcortical band heterotopia and has a sex-linked inheritance and hence more than 90% of the affected individuals are females. The mainstay of diagnosis is brain MRI, which shows the characteristic heterotopic band in all imaging sequences. When studied by PET scan, the abnormal cortex was found to have a glucose uptake that is similar to or even greater than normal cortex. In better words, this extra layer of cortex is active and alive. But does this give you extra processing power? Well, unfortunately not. In fact, affected individuals typically present with epilepsy and variable degrees of mental retardation. And this reminds us that too much of anything is bad, even if that is your brain cortex.